When we talk about matters of race, I think it's very important to begin with the thought that because we all bear some sort of an ethnicity, or multiple ethnicities, like my kids do. I mean, they're you know, a little bit of Mexican, a little bit of Irish, a little bit of African American. That, that shapes our view of the world. Here's what I'm saying. If you're listening to this and you're white, most white people do not consciously see themselves as being white. I really don't believe that. Sort of like, I don't consciously see myself as having two arms. It's just how I function. I want you to view minorities, though, as having one arm. If you're a one-armed person in a two-armed society, you are consistently aware of the fact that you've got one arm. So if I'm going to build bridges and have authentic relationships as a two-armed person with a one-armed person, there's got to be this driving sense of sensitivity and awareness and compassion towards them. Not as some pet projects, but I need to take some steps towards them. So I would say, first of all, you gotta flip a switch and go, I've been created with a certain ethnicity. My ethnicity, no matter who you are, African American, Mexican, uh, Chinese, white, no matter who you are, your ethnicity has some great things about it, but it also comes with some limitations. And what you need is, you need a multi-ethnic tribe of friendships who are going to press against your personal preferences and cultural norms, and in that emerges a beauty. That's why I think God's primary tool in sanctifying us outside of the Holy Spirit are other people. And you need other people in your life who don't see it the way you see it, right? So if you're a white person, let's say, um, and you, you, you have been raised with an ethic of the police are your friends, so if your cat gets stuck in the trees, we call the police. Police comes over, gets the cat out. That's kind of your ethic. That's the world you grew up in. They were your friends. Well, if you're an African-American, maybe, and you grew up in a different context, and police were not someone to be friendly with, but if police were around, it's because something drastically was wrong and you could end up being killed or going to go, go to jail, that's a completely different perspective. Now, let me ask you a question. Whose perspective is right and who's wrong? I don't think it's a matter of right or wrong. I just think it's a matter of seeing things differently. So what we have to do is check a box and go, I have a perspective, box number two, my perspective is not always right. And it takes humility to see that. And so I may be a part of the Fox News crowd, I may be, I may be a part of the MSNBC crowd or the CNN crowd, but what I need is if I'm part of the CNN crowd, I need my Fox News friends to show me a different way of looking at it. Instead of seeing things through a black and white, right and wrong perspective, now we've got some beauty here. Now there's the yin and yang. Corey Edwards, a PhD at The Ohio State University, she says this. She says, if you actually go to, to a homogenous church, homogenous churches actually entrench racism. Why? Are homogenous churches racist? That's not her point. She's saying, in a homogenous church where everybody pretty much sees it generally from the same perspective, then those perspectives get deepened and entrenched. The beauty of a multi-ethnic church is you, you, you have people who see it differently, who there's some give and take there. I just, not too long ago, white lady at my church, I pastor a multi-ethnic church on the West Coast. White lady at my church is the head of the Donald Trump campaign for Santa Clara. She asked me and our mostly African-American elder board to anoint her with oil and pray over her. Now, we didn't do that in service, and we didn't pray over Donald Trump. We prayed over her. But do you not think there is some angst among some of my African-American elders? Of course there is, but I think there's beauty in that. I love the fact that you can't label our church the Republican church or the Democratic church. So, so we, we've got to have the humility to go, there's different perspectives here. And so now I come into the relationship not trying to clone somebody in my image, but I come into the relationship going, you bring something to the table, I don't. There's a way of seeing God and seeing life that you have that I don't have. Let me learn from you. I think that's the beauty of it. And as long as you come with humility, I think the rest is a lot easier.